Hey everyone, Dan with Angry Corgi Productions here. We're gonna make a chicken stir fry today. So right now we're gonna work on the sauce. Um, I'm just kind of scraping together from a few different recipes, uh, some I'd like to try out. So if you guys are willing, no one's gonna die, I can at least assure that. We'll, we'll make sure everybody cooks their chicken later, but right now for the sauce, uh, let's get going. So I'm gonna take two tablespoons of cornstarch. I also decided to wear my blackish shirt today to work with uh, cornstarch. I definitely recommend either using an apron or, you know, another color of shirt. So two tablespoons of cornstarch, and I'm going to mix this in to four tablespoons of cold water. So I'm just going to put it in my pot here because I do like to heat up my sauces when I'm, uh, when I'm cooking. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you guys kind of a thickening agent. So, uh, you know, more of that creaminess when you're uh, when, you, when you get a sauce going. Uh, we're also gonna be adding some honey here in a little bit, but I just wanna get this all whisked up, kinda make a slurry out of it. If you do need to add more water, go ahead. Sometimes, you know, if you need to add another teaspoon, uh, it's not gonna cloud it up too much. All right, so now that that's done, we kinda get a slurry. Uh, once we have that, we are gonna go ahead. I've got about a half cup of chicken broth. Uh, if you want to make your own, that's fine. Uh, I personally did, so I used uh, just one of those uh, Nor Bouillon cubes and a cup of water, boiled it down, um, you know, added a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of pepper and a little bit of uh, garlic powder to it. Um, that can go into our sauce mix. Uh, from there, we're going to add doo -doo -doo -doo, one tablespoon of uh, sesame oil. Sesame oil is extremely potent. You do not need much of it. Uh, so don't overdo it, like never put in a cup of something. It, it's always going to be, uh, you know, a teaspoon or a tablespoon. A teaspoon will, will probably get you by on this. If you do like having more of a sesame flavor, go up from a teaspoon to a tablespoon. Right. Okay, after that, I've got a quarter cup of honey here. We're going to add that. And if you warm up your honey too, it's gonna to make your life a lot easier. This one's uh, kind of just been hanging out on uh, on the counter, so it's not super easy to work with, but it's not doing too bad right now. Okay, we'll list this together a little bit. Okay. After this, we can start adding our soy sauce. And I like to put in, a lot of people use chili flake. I actually like to use the sweet chili sauce itself. So we're gonna put in three tablespoons of soy sauce. And again, if you like a little salt here, you know, add, a, add another teaspoon. But remember, you can always add, you can't take away. So work yourself up, try to get up to that salty sweet that you're looking for. Okay, and then I'm going to put in a tablespoon of, uh, of the sweet chili sauce, so I can get this open. And you know, make your life easier. If you're going to cook, get things open first. Don't be like that. All right. So I'm going to a tablespoon of the sweet chili sauce. I like a little, if you like a lot more heat, have at her. Uh, you know, but again, you can add, you can't really take away sometimes. Alright, so now that we got this done, let's whisk this all together. And then I'm just going to put it on, uh, on on the stove there at the low. So you don't need to go any higher. Um, you know, once we get a little closer to putting in our kisser, we'll, or uh, putting it in with our chicken and our veg, uh, we'll, we'll boost up the heat. Uh, what that cornstarch and water is going to do is going to start to thicken it up. So right now, uh, you know, if Tracy, I don't know if, she can, if you can get it, but you got kind of a nice... A nice smelling sauce here. You can smell the sesame seed uh, oil. You can smell the, the, the soy sauce. It's got a really nice smell to it. So we're gonna go put that on and I'll come back and we'll start prepping our veg and our chicken for cooking. Hey everyone. All right, we're gonna get our ingredients ready here for our uh, chicken stir fry. So I'm gonna be prepping some veg. Um, we had some, basically we're working with what we had in the fridge. So Tracy had bought some mushrooms. So this weekend, I'm gonna to try to do two chicken dishes with mushrooms. 
So we're gonna try to bring that out in the stir fry today. Um, I generally use onion, broccoli, uh, celery, carrot, peppers, uh, whatever you got around. Like if, if you see things starting to go bad, might not be a bad time to uh, you know start getting some chopping done, work on some knife skills and, and getting stir fry going. So uh, at the base of anything, I usually start with an onion. Um, everybody's got a different way to cut it. I don't need anything fancy. I do like having kind of a julienne cut when I'm doing a stir fry. So you get longer pieces, so when you're going, you kind of eat it better. So this guy over here. Okay, so then you'll get pieces like this. So that's how I prefer to do it. That's just my personal opinion. You can cube them, you can dice them, do however you like to do it. I don't mind the taste of the sauteed onion. Uh, so we'll use, I'm gonna make, uh, I'd say it was probably a, a small yellow onion would do. Uh, when you're choosing your onions, the other thing as well is, uh, I was always taught, you know, you generally don't cook with a red onion unless you're gonna broil it barbecue a kind of uh, char it. Uh, so you generally want to stay with a white or a yellow onion. They're a little sweeter so they caramelize a lot more when they're cooking. So we'll just slice up this next one here. and really dependent on the size of the mushroom uh, I don't know Tracy would you prefer them quartered or would you like them sliced 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 okay so let's grab them slice them nice and easy and try to make your cuts so that the thickness on everything is a little even right so it's going to cook at the same temp or same temperature same time and, uh, and it's going to make your life a lot easier so and once we get to cutting the chicken, it'll be the same procedure. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll dice it, we'll make it into, you know, relatively uniform pieces so that we get a nice cook on it. Another news, my house got sold instead of you guys just here listening to me uh, chopping away. But uh, so I will be moving out full time to McGregor. So good memories in Winnipeg, some bad memories in Winnipeg. But uh, we're moving on to the next chapter so that uh, me and Tracy can start our life. Uh, you can't tell, but she is extremely excited sitting behind that camera uh, as I talk about it. But uh, we're gonna move on to pepper. Well, it really depends. I can put some more mushrooms in here as well, I guess. So we'll, uh, we'll use probably about half of that package. So it was just one of those one pound packs that you got at the grocery, so I'm assuming Walmart. Uh, but wherever you go is fine, so these, it doesn't matter. They're all generic. Uh, just a nice white mushroom. Okay, we'll go on to our peppers. Uh, I generally try to keep it the same as my, uh, my onions. So we'll just give them a nice slice and then you get something like that. Very smooth. Thanks baby, still got all my fingers, so you know. We're winning right now, knock on wood. But uh, if you can't slice fast, I've been slicing for a long time, don't be that guy, you know, don't do this. Your knuckles are in, that blade should never touch your fingers. And this is a very sharp knife and the fact that I still got gloves on, that's a good thing. And generally, <laughs> gloves are generally your first indication that you're about to slice your skin off. I like to use them just so, you know, I can wash them easily. I'm not cross contaminating with anything under the fingernails. But uh, we'll keep going here on this pepper so we can get done because I'm sure you guys have better things to do than some meat talk all afternoon. Okay, we got a red pepper. 
peppers in. And do a yellow. Do we so, cut the yellow one differently than the red one? Well, you can't, well, can't anymore. If you had it together, so if Tracy piped up, you know, we could cut it like this, so you would get a ring. So, and that's when I make pizza next week, uh, you know, we'll go over that because when I do my pizza, I like to have different cuts on my pepper. So thanks for bringing that up, Tracy, really appreciate it. Uh, the other thing too, guys, or guys and girls, I shouldn't be that guy. Um, when you're cleaning your pepper, try to get as much white off. Uh, I've always just kind of capped them, run them under hot water, stick your finger in and kind of just not drop everything on the floor. Uh, but just kind of clean it out with your fingers like we're not we're, we're not animals, but you know we, we can clean up our veggies a little bit so Same thing with our peppers just for a sense of uniformity Sounds good. Oh, it's, it smells great. There, there, there is nothing that relaxes more than the, the smell of fresh cut lawns and fresh cut vegetables. Uh, okay. So with the, uh, with the broccoli, what we're going to do, I really just want the florets, right? So I don't really need the stalk. So try to chop it off as close to the florets as you can. Uh, mine was pre-washed, so, you know, wash your veggies. I really don't feel like I have to say it, but, you know. Every time I go outside, I tell myself that people are getting smarter and sometimes it's a lie and sometimes it's true, but wash your veggies, people don't get sick. There's a lot of stuff going around and we don't need to be locked up again. Okay. So here, if there, if you got large ones, you know, try to quarter them careful with the edge of your knife. So you can even break them up. Okay. Get these in here. Give yourself also a big enough bowl so that when you're cooking, it's not gonna overflow on you like mine is about to do. So depending on how much you like broccoli, uh, you know, add a little more. So we may as well just get her all done here today. Worst case, you got leftovers for, for lunches. Okay. And next are carrots. So uh, with carrots, let's do sticks. So we're gonna go, so careful. Uh, there's two ways to do it. I've always kind of get it locked in, bring it down, drop. And we're gonna do this a couple times. This takes time. So if you can't do it well first, don't feel too bad. Uh, the straighter the carrot, the better, I guess. But yeah, you just kind of want to give yourself relatively even cuts. So. sticks shove them in my overflowing uh, my, my overflowing bowl there okay and these for me are a little long so I'm gonna chop them in half make them however big however small you like Okay, and once we're done this, uh, everyone, we're gonna go, we're gonna go get our pan on low. You wanna get that preheated, do not put meat into a cold pan. So before we start dicing our chicken, we're gonna go get our pan warmed up. Uh, I use a non-stick, you know, the rock non-stick. So start it off at low, build it up, you know, to depending on where you're at, but 
you know, I had a digital display, I'd usually put it at about three and a half, four. You want to be just below medium. You never want to start those pans on high heat. That's how you ruin the pans. That's how they warp. That's how you get that brown in them. Let's keep our non-stick pans non-stick. It doesn't take long uh, to do proper maintenance, but that's what uh, I would be doing right after we cut this carrot. So mine's already going because uh, I figured I'd start that. But we're gonna move on to the chicken. So the reason I did the veg before the chicken as well, um, once you start using that chicken on a cutting board, it's contaminated, right? So I always do the meat last. Um, you know, if you got another cutting board that you can use for meat, great. Uh, I just like to use this one because I very much like this one. So, you know, I'm not gonna con contaminate the chicken with any raw veg, but the raw chicken will contaminate your raw veg. So wait till the end, clean it off, or make sure you actually like soap it down after and clean it properly, especially with these wood ones. You don't want anything going into the cracks. So we're gonna use chicken breast. You can use chicken thigh. I generally use thighs, but you know, we've got some breasts available. Thighs tend to be a little darker and you don't, you, you don't have, I find them juicier. Uh, so, but either way, we're gonna just dice these out so I usually cut my strips first as I knock everything over on the floor. Okay. And the other thing is, you can, well, you can just use the same bowl. I should have brought another one, but you know, we're here now, so I'll just put it back in that bowl and then we're gonna get it into our pan that is warming up right now with some oil and we before we add anything else to it we're going to make sure that that chicken is cooked so like i said try making as uniform cuts as you physically can uh, you don't want you know one huge uh, cut that isn't going to cook the same as another cut so as long as you're relatively in the same ballpark everything should cook well and okay so at a bigger piece so you know we'll chop that into two And it also helps when you're dicing them. Uh, so if you keep them in the fridge, they kind of tense up a bit. Like if you're using frozen, uh, you know, thaw it out, but to a point where it's kind of still cold in the middle, because that's going to help you with your knife cuts as well. So that's another just tri trick that I've learned over the years. So we're going to cube these guys out now. All right, so we've got our ingredients prepped. So once we're done here, we're gonna go, we're gonna get on the pan. Uh, before you do anything else, anything that chicken's touched, get it in the sink, get it washed, do what you gotta do. So we'll be back in a couple minutes here while you guys won't notice, because we, we do such fantastic editing here over at Angry Corgi Productions. But uh, we're gonna start getting the stove ready. Uh, we're gonna get our uh, chicken uh, cooked out, so make sure it's completely white. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna add our veg. And then we're going to go ahead and while we're making the veg, you know, get it hot. If you have a wok, the wok is a preferable method. I don't have a wok here, so I'm just going to have to use a pan. So, you know, you're going to be constantly flipping. You want to keep it moving. The, the whole point of a stir fry is that you're cooking it at high heat while continuously stirring. So if you have a wok, you know, a couple of uh, tablespoons of olive oil, get your chicken in, brown that, add your veg, you know, you can add the sauce pretty much any time after the chicken's done, but just make sure that your chicken's done first. I like to cook my chicken at a bit of a lower temperature first, and then I can get it on that high heat, but it's really up to you. Uh, these chicken breasts are fine They're from the farm. I don't expect them to dry out on me, but you know, if you've had some chicken breasts that have been in the freezer for two years, we all had to debate whether or not we would eat this. If it's freezer burnt, cook it a little lower. Don't drain as much uh, moisture out of it and that way you're not gonna have super tough chicken uh, pieces in your stir fry. But anyways, guys, we're gonna do a little cleaning. We're gonna get this chicken on the pan and we'll be back shortly. All right, everyone. So when you're done cooking your food, you should have something that looks like this. So we mixed in that sauce halfway through. I kept a little bit, so it's up to you guys, but I always like to dress my food after with a little bit. Uh, you can serve it. If you, all you have is ramen noodles at home, make a pack of ramen noodles, put them down. 
and from there we can go. But uh, what I did was basmati rice. So I got a little bit of the uh, sauce left over. Give me a second to yell at Google. Hey Google, turn off timer. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're going just to drizzle some of that sauce over it. We're gonna try to get some of that rice. Okay, if you have uh, white sesame seeds, you can toast them and throw it on. Another thing that's really delicious is if you guys have peanuts, roast some peanuts, just fry it up on, uh, on a skillet. Uh, just gives it a little extra texture, a little extra crunch. But anyways, at the end of the meal, you should have some that looks like this. Bon appetit, everybody. Have a great uh, night, and we'll be back tomorrow with another chicken and mushroom dish.